Hi YouTube! Um, today is Thursday, the August the 30th, and um, it's the night before the full moon, which is also a blue moon, um, which means that it's the second full moon over a period of 30 days. Um, so it's a really special event. I wanted to show you guys this book that I found called The Golden Quest, and I think it's part of a series called The Golden Quest, and this volume is called Skanda. Um, I found this at a rare and used bookstore called Alabaster, um, which is on 4th Avenue in about like near Union Square, uh, in case you wanted to check it out. It's a cool place. Um, so this book is, uh, I guess, a series of channeled messages from the Hindu deity Skanda, and um, I guess I'll just read a little bit from that and then we can go into an invocation, um, which um, is suggested to be read on the night of the full moon. So, Skanda is said to have issued from the third eye of Shiva as six sparks of fire which were cast into the Ganges. They then flowed into the holy Himalayan lake Saravana and then were transformed into six babes. These were taken care of by the six nymphs of the constellation of Pleiades, and the six aspects or powers became unified into one in the fond embrace of the goddess Uma, and took the present form called Skanda. And I have this cool visual here of the upward facing triangle representing the male aspect or Shiva, and the downward facing triangle representing the female aspect or Shakti. When you put them together, they form this, also known as the Star of David or the Merkaba, if it were in 3D. 3D. Um, if you don't know what that is, then look it up. Okay, so. Oh, there's also something that says um, Master Hilarion calls the six sparks the skandhas, which creates the life energy in each chakra. When the mother of the universe, Uma, embraced the six sparks or babes, they became one. This represents evolution's ultimate goal. Therefore, the celestial god Skanda has come to earth as the epitome of the divine, which unites us as one in the seventh chakra, here, the place of liberation. Okay. So, instructions for the use of Sri Skanda's divine messages. It has been said that the brilliant beams at the time of the full moon signify the reflection of truth which especially affects us at that period by making our intuition more sensitive. Therefore, Sri Skanda chose the time of the full moon for his discourses. Below, Sri Skanda has given us instructions to obtain the best results from his following messages. Um, he suggests that you read one lesson at a time um, at the time of the full moon of each month when the vibratory rate is high. Um, read and reread this lesson periodically to renew and strengthen its feeling and vibratory rate. Check your progress at the end of each week and observe where you have been victorious and where you have fallen from the truth of being. Correct them mentally by observing the mistakes and rethinking them in your mind with positivity. In this way, your mind will become the victor and a positive attitude will become part of your life. By so doing, you wipe out karmic error and create a new divine way of thinking. I also thought I should read this foreword, um, which is a really good introduction to um, the monthly discourse, which I will get to later. Great changes are coming on your plane called Earth. The Earth itself is being raised in vibration and therefore will have to shift its position. Before long, the Kali Yuga age will recede and the age of Satya, truth, will be dawned. The preparational changes will be immense and awesome. The mind must be kept firm, the emotions calm. Wisdom and understanding must be your weapon to come through unscathed. You must prepare yourself by raising your vehicle, the body, to a higher vibration as I help you accelerate and activate your atomic structure in preparation for the dawning of the new age. You are not on earth by chance at this difficult and perilous time but have taken incarnation to be my helper, to help usher in the age of truth. You must remain firm and stalwart, my soldier, nay, my general, 
to help guide those who might flounder, not knowing what is happening around them. You must keep your mind stayed on me and on the light, Goddess Jyoti, and not let your mind fall into dark crevices away from truth under any circumstances. Know for what you took form and keep your mind firm. Do not let it wander into the labyrinth of world conditions. That which you will see around you is but the pangs of Mother Earth giving birth to the new age of truth. Mankind has fallen so low that we of the celestial abode will no longer tolerate man's darkness and waywardness. Great numbers will have to leave the earth unless they change their ways. You, my faithful ones, must keep your heart full of love and faith, stayed in the highest during this time soon to come to up on earth. Prepare yourself through breathing, pranayama, meditation, and control of the mind through concentration. Eat clean food and take care of your body. Let not trouble trouble you. March forward, shoulders back, feet firm, in faith, and know I am by your side. The awareness of Jyoti was brought to earth at this time after being hidden for thousands of years because the age of truth and light is already beginning to dawn on the horizon for those who can understand and whose souls are awakened. The changes which will occur are for the sake of those who through the ages have kept faithful to the highest truth. Now is the time the vibration from the heavenly abode must come to earth to save it from destruction. Prove yourself worthy in the midst of opposition. Now is the time to trust your highest self and bring it forth. You will feel changes in your body and mind as the acceleration of your atoms takes place, a quickening. Fear not, it is all in the great plan. Trust. My blessings are ever with you. Call and I hear instantly. I, Skanda, son of Shiva, have spoken. Thou art invincible. With the escalation of hatred and warfare on earth, it behooves my children of light to be more aware and more alert to the feelings of adversity within themselves, thereby stemming the st stream of discord within before it flows outward and manifests as warfare on the outer plane called earth. The troubles of this earth are man-made, and therefore the solution lies within the children of earth. I, Skanda, expect my warriors of truth to fight the battle within as ardently and valiantly as those of darkness fight for evil without. Meeting hate with hate is not the answer. The answer lies within, in love. Soon will come on earth the final battle between darkness and light. Already my soldiers of truth have been battling the evil though some of my children are still living in the delusion that life in its present form can continue. Nay, this erroneous thinking will come to a sudden, unceremonious end with a jolt to those who refuse to listen to the warnings given from above to the children of earth. On this special day, I speak with fervor as a general who sees destruction ahead if the army does not obey instructions. My instructions are, Daily prepare your minds with alertness to that which is around you, with kind thoughts toward all. Your hearts must flow with unconditional love, and your bodies must be strong and firm. Steadfastness of your whole being should be your way. I see dire times ahead for those who refuse to change, and do not shoulder their divine responsibilities for which they took birth and for which I left my divine abode and came down to lead you safely through the fray. Children, I stand ready to help. Call and I am there, and above all, feel my tenderness and be filled with my golden light in your times of need. Your need is my responsibility. My peace is yours to take, if you but reach out. The battle rages on the inner plane and comes closer to the earth day by day. The decisive power lies within you. Only you can stem this onslaught. Keep your eyes and heart stayed on the light, and naught can touch thee. The battlefield of life can be strewn with the defeated, but it cannot touch thee. Thou art invincible. Thou art indestructible. Impervious to evil, thou art the light made manifest. Thou shalt walk through the fray, through the battlefield, unscathed. 
My banner thou must hold high, the banner of victory, that those who are weakening in this battle of life may see their way and follow thee. Follow thy path undaunted. Follow the way of truth and light. I go forth the head of thee with my veil head high, held high. Follow me through the darkness into the valley of golden light, where the sunlight shines brightly. Fear not the ways of the world. Fear not those who would entice thee and harm thee. Was I not created to inspire and teach thee to have courage to conquer and come forth untouched? This day I give thee confidence, not in the way the world perceives it, but confidence in the truth lying deep within thy soul. Stand firm on truth. The battle is already on. Knowing the outcome, the joy of victory should already be coursing through thy veins. Be courageous, children. Confidence in thine own innate nature will win the battle for thee. I call into the ethers thrice, that the power may penetrate thy three worlds. I call. Confidence is thy shield. Confidence is thy protection. Confidence is thy power. I do I hold my veil and give it onto, into thy hand to march onward in confidence to victory. Sri Skanda, son of Shiva.